Greetings gentlemen and ladies, in today's video I'm going to show you my recoil system and how to implement a similar system yourself. So basically, uh, what happens here is that the bone of the player's hand is actually rotated. So there's no animations at play here, it's just uh, a rotation of the player uh, bone to uh, basically create that animation, uh, create a, a recoil effect. Uh, a little bit of camera shake as well added on but uh, okay so here's how here's how I, I decided to do my recoil system so the first thing I did was in my animation blueprint uh, I went and I'm I started I'm going to use the transform modify bone on my hand R that's the hand that holds the gun uh, and what I did is I just created a, a hand recoil rotator variable and I set that uh, in my character blueprint. Uh, the default is just zero to start, but uh, to, uh, what you're going to want to do if you want to do create something like this is that uh, you want to select the the bone that you want to modify with this transform. So this will basically just add a little bit of rotation or scale or or position to the bone whenever it's uh, triggered. And it's going to be triggered in the event graph. I'll show you that in just a minute. But the thing that you want to do here is uh, select under the rotation, since we're affecting the rotation, the add to existing. Because we want to add whatever value is coming in from the hand rotation, which I'm going to set in my character blueprint. We want to add that to the rotation of, of my bone. So this is kind of how I'm doing it. So uh, in my event graph, I've got uh, basically just to cast to my character, bipeds my character, cast to my character, and uh, get the hand recoil uh, rotator variable, and then set the hand recoil rotator variable. It's just a, it's just a basically to, uh, well, I'll, ch I'll show you in a minute. So basically we just want to get that hand recoil variable because we're going to use that to affect the transform bone and that's basically just going to reflect whatever we p add. Whatever amount of rotation we add to that variable will be reflected on the hand basically is, is what that is all about. So into my character, uh, what I've done here is uh, I have created a collapsed, there we go, I should probably just uncollapse that so you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. Um, but that's okay, you know what, here's what we'll do. So what I've got here is my uh, pistol recoil graph. Now if I were to actually pull that out and uh, just make it, uh, uh, bring it out of the collapsed graph so it's a little bit easier for you guys to, to see what's going on here, this is basically it. So uh, I'll just move that from here to here so you guys can see what's going on. So basically every time I shoot, uh, I uh, pull the trigger basically, uh, it will trigger the recoil um, uh, event basically. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've just got my hand recoil variable which is a rotator type variable. So I've got that set uh, and all I'm doing here is I am adding a little bit of hand recoil uh, X and Y, basically some rotation on the X and the ro some rotation on the Y. So that's just my hand recoil variable, which has been split apart uh, into the X, Y, and Z. In case uh, those of you who are new are watching, wondering how I got that, that's my hand recoil variable. So then I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm adding uh, adding a negative value onto the X and then I'm uh, adding a positive value onto the Y. Now I would had to play around with these values a little bit to see which worked for my character. So basically what I just did is I jumped into the game, I you know tried what it did, I saw which way the gun went, and this in this case actually it's going up, right? And it's not coming back down because each uh, bullet press uh, adds plus five minus five, right? So it just keeps going like that. Uh, so what I did now to compensate for it kind of uh, just going, uh, let's say, uh, up and up and up but never coming down is I added in a delay uh, which basically starts subtracting from the uh, from what has been added to the uh, hand recoil variable. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, I'm setting the 
hand rotator variable based on what it is already, because it might already be a little bit in the air if the, if the player is pulling the trigger really fast. So say they're adding, you know, plus five, plus five, plus five really quickly before it has a chance to come down from recoil. They're adding plus five, plus five really quickly. So I just want to get what it's at. Maybe it's at plus seven. So I want to add another plus five onto that existing plus seven or whatever the case may be. So I'm getting my existing hand recoil rotator, splitting it apart. Uh, I'm saying I want to add uh, another minus five and an another plus five onto whatever it already happens to be. Uh, and from there, what I'm doing is I am going to now set the uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the uh, and this is why it didn't actually come back down because this part here got unplugged so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let's see if a hand recoil is uh, true uh, let's see so uh, basically if the uh, hand rotator variable is not reset to zero if it's not exactly zero and back in its starting position uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through that and there's a little delay here uh, which continues to try to bring that back to zero that's the whole goal here is that uh, uh, I'm subtracting by uh, 0.05 and minus plus 05 and minus 05 just because it's kind of smoother if you sub uh, I found it was a bit smoother if I subtract by that amount and all I'm doing is adding and uh, adding and subtracting 0.5 onto my X and my Y uh, with a delay I found of 0 0.015 which seemed pretty nice and smooth and so this little delay timer is just trying to get that um, uh, hand ro rotator back to zero that's its whole goal if the player keeps firing it'll keep going up it'll keep getting higher but this continues to be triggered every time the player fires and it continues to try to bring it basically just triggers continues to well it actually doesn't trigger every time the player fires it triggers uh, until it reaches zero basically so uh, this will just continue to uh, loop around until this it gets to zero and because we're subtracting by uh, an even number 0 0.05 uh, it'll, it'll hit zero exactly zero so this is basically uh, if it does not equal zero if the rotator does not equal zero x zero y zero z do it again if it does not equal zero do it again and so on and so forth so I'll pause the uh, I'll actually just show you guys the whole logic here in case you want to uh, just kind of copy that out so we got all that stuff you can pause the video here if you like and so now when we jump back into game uh, what we should have is the gun returning itself right Yes, it's a little bit funny how you kind of bring it back to aiming a little bit slower like that. I might add some logic so that if it gets, um, so that maybe, maybe actually so it, you know what the logic, a good logic would be, would uh, be to stop it from getting too high up so that you didn't have that kind of funny recovery. But for the most part, I think this works pretty well. Uh, so I hope you guys have found this video helpful. That's how I decided to create my recoil system. I kind of like it because it could be applied pretty nicely to uh, to uh, any weapon. You can apply different amounts of recoil rotation depending on how much recoil you want. And yeah, that's just kind of like uh, what I'm using for my system because all of my aiming is basically based on uh, gun position. It's not actually it doesn't actually take into account the uh, player's camera position. So everything that I do is kind of like based on where the actual true position of the weapon is, which is kind of a little bit different, I think, than normal. But I've got some, you know, certain reasons for doing it that way. So that's why I'm kind of working that. Um, yeah. OK. Hope you guys have found this one uh, helpful. Um, it was kind of a creative solution to uh, to uh, kind of a creative non-standard approach, I think, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs>